Hey everyone, welcome back. Ready to dive into a world where the living and the dead, well, they kind of bump shoulders on the same dusty streets. Sounds intriguing. Today we're taking a look at Rodrigo Prieto's take on Pedro Paramo. Oh, wow. Based on, I'm sure you know, the mm -hmm. super famous Mexican novel. Yeah, I know Pedro Paramo. And you know Prieto, right? The cinematographer. Oh, yeah. Brokeback Mountain. Yeah. Barbie, even. I did not know that one. He was a cinematographer. Mm. But with Pedro Paramo, he actually directs. Wow, that's so cool. Taking on Juan Rulfo's, like, masterpiece of magical realism. It's a big one to adapt, huh? Huge. But that's what makes this deep dive so interesting, right? How does a visual master like Prieto tackle this story. Yeah, how does he do it? Well, before we get into Prieto's vision, maybe you can give us a little background on the novel itself. Like, why is Pedro Paramo such a big deal in Mexican literature? Oh, absolutely. So Pedro Paramo by Juan Rulfo, it's considered one of the most, I mean, it's a cornerstone of Mexican literature, no question. Yeah. And it's a cornerstone of magical realism, the whole genre. Right. You know, that style that blends like the fantastical and the real world to give us a whole new way of seeing things. It's a whole new perspective. Exactly. And bringing a book like that, so layered, so complex to film, it's a massive challenge, believe me. Yeah, I can imagine. Because the book, it's all shifting perspectives, yeah. you know? hazy timelines like where are we and then a sense of place you know mm. comola oh yeah so specific so hard to capture visually you know and yet that's what makes prieto's approach so fascinating yeah the way he takes these challenges head on absolutely you know for those who haven't read the book just a quick rundown okay we follow fon preciado okay he goes to this town comola yeah. to find his dad pedro parmo the infamous infamous right mm -hmm. but comola is a ghost town huh. haunted by pedro parmo's like legacy of ruthlessness wow and prieto captures that perfectly comola this town it's beautiful and desolate at the same time mm. and the ghosts how he films them they're not those jump scares yeah yeah but like these subtle ethereal presences you know oh i see yeah you get chills there's this one scene lost souls just drifting above the village whoa visually amazing <laughs> but unsettling too like yeah. makes you think you know how the past can linger, haunt us. You've hit on something there, I think. One of the film's biggest strengths. Yeah. How Prieto uses visuals, right, to show those deeper themes. Loss, longing, the past always there. Yeah, yeah. Some critics, they say the film loses some depth, you know, condensing the book down. It is a complex book. It is. But Prieto's camera, it shines in how he gets each character's story. Even if it's short. Even if it's short. Think of Dolores, abandoned by Pedro Paramo or Susana, his like lost love. Yeah. These stories, they're fragments, sure, but they're so detailed. Oh, costumes. Costumes, yeah. production design, everything. Yeah. It takes you right back to that time. Like stepping back in time. It is. It's true. The film moves fast. Mm. But it kind of reflects Juan Preciado's experience, right? Mm -hmm. Stumbling through Kamala. Confused. Ah. Trying to put together his father's past, piece by piece. Hmm. Yeah. Speaking of that, how Prieto handles those multiple narrators from right. the book. Oh, yeah. Bouncing between times, yeah. sometimes in the same scene. Like, whoa, where are we now? Right. Blending past and present. So cool. Like, the town itself, Comala, is stuck. Oh. In its own history. Yeah, I like that. Trapped. Yeah. Yeah. That blending, that's like one of Prieto's trademarks, you know? Is it? Yeah. It's not just for looks, it reinforces those themes, right? Oh, go Kamala, ahead. it's not just where the past happened. Yeah. The past is there, it shapes everything. Hmm. And we see it, right? Yeah. As Juan wanders, he's listening to the ghosts, these snippets of stories. Yeah. And he's putting together his dad's life, you know? This ruthless, ambitious guy. Exactly. Driven by, I don't know, ambition, things he couldn't get. Desire. And sound design. Oh. Oh, yeah. Whispers, echoes, things rustling. It's like spooky. Spooky. Like the debt. They haven't left Comala. So powerful, those scenes. They are. That sense of loss, longing, not just for Juan. Right. For everyone trapped there. Powerful stuff. Yeah. Pedro Parmo. I mean, what a film. Especially for a first time director. For a debut, it's incredible. Makes you think, right. Our actions, mm. how they echo, they leave their mark. Yeah. On places, on people. Peter Parmo, it shows, you know, a pretty as a storyteller, a visual storyteller. And now he can direct. Exactly. Bright future there. Adapting a book like this, there's always choices. Right. But he gets it. 
you know? The essence of Rolfo's book. The heart of it. The heart, that atmosphere, that feeling, it's all on the screen. It lingers with you. It does. It makes you think about the past, mm -hmm. how it sticks around. So I gotta ask, if you could go to a ghost town like Kamala. Oh, wow. What stories would you want to hear, you know, whispered on the wind? Ooh, that's a good question. What secrets would you be afraid to find? Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. If you're into Prieto's visual style, by the way, check out some of his other work. Brokeback Mountain, obviously. Beautiful film. Killers of the Flower Moon just came out. I need to see that one. He's so talented across all these different genres. Amazing. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into Pedro Paramo. It's been, uh, I don't know about you, but it's been really thought-provoking for me. Absolutely. It has for me, too. We'll see you next time on the next Deep Dive. Sounds good. <laughs>